from Megan, but it's Steve. How soon can you tell if you have a pup that will be a great service dog? <coughs> Take your best ones for breeding, otherwise they're going downhill. And after that, it's, it's whatever happens, the way it goes. stuff happens. Uh, things that are out of our control, but we have to go on the assumption that they're all going to be, even the ones that are for breeding or that are not going to make it, uh, get some level of training before we even get to that point. So uh, they all get trained one way or the other. And we don't we don't wipe them out if they do something if they have some weird thing we try and fix it right fix it and, right. and we also know what each every, each dog is different so we know when it comes time to starting to select applicants and look at who's for who uh, we know what we have and we kind of that's why it's important for us to know who the applicants are and what they're all about so that we can match the right dog with the right person. kind of goes along with having a very short dog for a very tall person isn't <laughs> such a great idea. <laughs> well, a very tall dog for a very short person has been wonderful. A little bit easier that way. Why don't you show me the mail while we're sitting here? Not gonna be. No, just the, just the paper mail underneath that. The middle stuff. There we go. I can see that while you're... was came with Charlie. I knew that was coming out. <laughs> uh, let me back up here. Let me check out them all. Well, they keep coming, so you just... Okay, well, I know for a fact, because I watched last night, that Megan covered how can you control unnecessary barking, so... <laughs> 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 I know Megan covered that last night. Uh, if she thinks she did, I don't know. But anyway... Uh, and they want me to talk a little louder, so I'll talk louder. Um, what is your favorite activity in training the dogs and puppies? My favorite is when they get to the point that you can put your thumbs up and go, yeah, because the dog finally gets it. And they've figured it out on their own, and all you've done is guide them to making sure they know what they're doing. So the favorite part for me is when they start to really progress and show really good work ethics. Uh, and once they get it, they seem to stick with it for most of the part, uh, and then you just keep progressing. Once you start progressing a little bit, you progress a lot, and that's really the goal that makes it so much easier. Isn't that just learning to learn? Yes. Once they learn to learn, you got it made. Yeah. But over that, that first hurdle, you, you, things move pretty quickly. Yeah. Uh, how Steve was teamed up with Charlie. I don't know how I was teamed up with Charlie, but I'm sure I'm grateful I was. <laughs> uh, right. That was probably Carlene and Megan uh, finding the right dog with the right person. Uh, keeping in mind, when I got Charlie, uh, I was barely walking. So. Uh, or talking. Or talking much, yeah. No. I was, uh, it took me the first two years of being with Charlie to relearn how to walk and to get myself to where I'm at now. Um, although my wife will tell you, <laughs> I am not allowed to leave the house by myself without Charlie. Going with, an, with a, an adult human is fine, but not to go out by myself without Charlie. <laughs> where did I learn to work with dogs? I've worked with military dogs, I've worked with police dogs, um, I've done some training with, I call them civilian dogs, um, obedience, 
misbehaving dogs. Um, and then working with Carlene and Megan with service dogs. Um, Carlene said something very, very good the other day. It's, and it's, it's, as many years as I've been working with dogs, it's been a true fact. You can't teach trainers. They either get it or they really don't get it. And you can really <laughs> see very quickly if they don't get it. You kind of have to, I always say, be one with the dog. Uh, you either understand dogs or you really don't understand dogs. Uh, enough to be trained. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's kind of one of those deals that you look at a dog, you, you watch a dog, you evaluate a dog, and you want the dog to learn. And you just figure out how that's going to happen. And one thing I always go back to is what would the mother dog do if the mother dog was going to teach this little puppy how to do something? I try to not to forget that. Yeah. You also have to keep in mind that you can't have in your head too strong at what you want the dog to do without taking into consideration how the dog feels about that. Because I think some trainers make the big mistake about, I want that dog to sit, crunch, you know, no. Please, let's do it, you know. Once they get the idea, once they learn to learn, then you're all set. I get that from that movie, Miracle Worker, with Patty Duke, where Helen Keller is born blind and deaf and can't communicate at all, and finally, halfway through the movie, she learns that the fingers meaning, moving mean the word water. And once she learns that water, She's off and flying because she's a very bright woman, um, and it's kind of that way with dogs. I think I suggest anybody training a dog watch that movie. I'm going to read this next question, but I have to tell you, I am the I am the one trainer that doesn't know all their names yet, but I will tell you who eats fast, who barks more, who's a little more aggressive than the other ones who runs around more. So I pay attention to a lot of the things that remind me of that dog, and then the names kind of fall into place. Uh, so for people who are asking me about specific puppies, with all the puppies we got right now, I probably don't know them all. Steve, simply in your opinion, put the pokies, Opal's litter, oh. who is the smartest thinker, and who is the mischief maker? As to thinker, since I only see stuff on camera, no. Wrinkle seems to be, she is the one that figured out the jailbreak in the kitchen and did so twice in one day. I can also tell you Wrinkle broke out of the barn too. Not out of the barn, but out of her little pen in the barn and got down the alleyway. So she is a, she is a jailbreaker. As far as the smartest and the mischief and all that, I don't have an answer to that. I've heard, I don't know if she's in this crowd or not, but the, the puppy they thought was deaf, somebody has told me is brilliant, whoever that is. Yeah. Who was the one? Neko? Neko. Neko. Yeah. Oh yeah, Neko's, yeah. I can sum up that if I know their name already, it's probably because of a reason, like Neko, what's Hill and Addy? Yeah, Washer, Tumbler, those have all given me a reason to know their name. So. <laughs> uh, did you take any pups out in public today? Yes, we did. We try to get as many as we can out along with pushing the older dogs at the same time. Where the older dogs are getting a little more time out because we're extending their focus and their in their ability to be out in public more often where the puppies don't go out as long of a time period because their attention span is a lot lower right now. And they're working a lot more to get over that first hurdle of wanting to learn how to do things. Where the older dogs are already know they're learning and we're really kind of pushing them to go further time frames and lengths to make them better service dogs. 
plus the fact you've got the car ride. Yes. The, the young puppies haven't been in the car that much, so that's, if you don't do any more than ride around the car for a few minutes, that's yeah. a big plus right there. They're gaining right there. Where the older dogs, to them, a car ride, a breeze. Right. Yeah. service dogs. No, because if Charlie could change train service dogs, they Carlene wouldn't need Megan me. <laughs> so Charlie does not train dogs. <laughs> he I does train me, however. I don't know whether one dog can train another that much. Did no. you? No, I don't. I think they make like riots, a good example of kind of like guides dogs here yeah. and there and you know kind of corrals a little bit and does that. But as far as actual training no, I don't. I don't believe. I've never seen it. I haven't seen it. No, the only thing I've seen is sometimes if you have a very nervous dog, if you take out a dog with them that's got a lot of confidence, you you may get a little wash, you know. Yes. Wash there, but um, like I, I've often taken a dog out with Bentley because he doesn't care about anything. Right. Um, and Bentley would stay with the other little dogs that you have, and the little dogs would tend to stick with Bentley yeah. because they're not. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't hurt, but as far as, you know, a, a dog training another dog? No. Have uh, you worked with Voodoo? Voodoo make it, made it back to general population today. And Voodoo went out for a ride with me to the store. And for, you know, being in another area for a few weeks because she was in heat, she did very good today. I was very, very impressed. I hope. <laughs> Voodoo is one of those dogs. That's a good example of you have to understand Voodoo and how Voodoo works because Voodoo kind of works a little bit differently than some of the other dogs do. Uh, it's just a matter of slowing, in my opinion, a matter of slowing down a little bit, letting her build her confidence on her own decision making, and letting her go with it instead of trying to force her into something or make her do something. If you've got to get from A to B, and she wanders off a little bit right now, a little sideways and still gets there, that's progress for Voodoo. Let's, let's not concentrate so much on direct line. Uh, Micromanaging. Right. Yeah. Don't, don't, and that can be a problem. And not every dog is, is like Voodoo, but Voodoo is one of those dogs that let her build her confidence in making her decisions, and then eventually she'll just do it right because she wants to do it right. to the question about barking because it brought up again. Megan did cover it yesterday. I will repeat it for you. A dog that is going to continuously bark is going to continuously bark. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> there are ways to... Let me put it to you this way. I have worked with military dogs, police dogs that had a huge barking problem. We did slow the barking down, but never stopped the barking. And the methods that they use probably are not acceptable for all dogs. And by Electric. that I mean electronic collar. Electric collar. Yeah. The electric collar used properly. I mean, are you going to let a dog get run over by a car because he likes to chase cars? You're going to no, zap him once right. and say, don't do there that. There are times and purposes for yeah. electrical collars. Right. There are also right and wrong barks, as far as I'm concerned. A alert bark is acceptable bark if it's not a continuous, out of control bark. An aggression bark is not acceptable. So, example being, if somebody comes to my house, Charlie will bark once, twice, three times until I say, Charlie, it's okay. But he doesn't, you know, if somebody comes in my house, he just doesn't go up and start barking at people. 
That's unacceptable. It doesn't happen that way. Uh, so I always say there's <coughs> two different barks here, aggression and alert. And alert barking is acceptable if it's just that short time period of alerting you that something is wrong. Charlie will actually alert bark if I fall down. He will bark <coughs> a couple of times before he comes over and lays down next to me. I never taught him that. I don't know if anybody's ever taught him that, but he does do that. <coughs> there's a third bark. I'm bored, I'm bored, I'm bored, I'm bored. Yes. That drives me crazy. That's really Can you important. name who I would I, who I would say has that bark? Who? Chaos. Well, she has it at supper, <laughs> <laughs> supper time. <laughs> Chaos will sometimes give you that I'm bored bark. Yeah, especially when it's supper. I'm, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. Well, that, I kind of call that an alert thing, because they're alerting you to do something, or something's wrong, or something's going on. They're not there. happy. Right, they're not happy. I'll go along with that one. It's the aggression bark that you have to keep on top of. assume you mean by, the question was, can you tell who is going to be tall? I assume you mean the dogs. Um, we get an indication as they grow by how fast they're growing, how, how their legs look, how their front looks, um, their length. I can usually look at them and say, this is going to be a tall dog. Um, but nothing is for sure. That's for sure. Where did, what was it, Gromit that Katie has? Uh, Sarge. No, Gromit, Mary, uh, Linda has. Who's the stud that, that Katie Gromit. has? Gromit? Gromit's He's short. Stud. Yes. Where did he come from? He's in the same litter with these monsters, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, he, you know. Yeah, there's no sure way until they start getting to that maturity level. Mm. What age do you start training the puppies and when do you feel they are ready? This is probably the most, the one question that I get the most, it doesn't matter if I'm out having supper and meet somebody, <laughs> or working, <coughs> or talking to volunteers, uh, and my answer has always been, within or just a few weeks, they're training, they just don't know it yet. And when they're ready is when they're ready. When we feel that they've accomplished all the goals, passed all the tests, and the trainers, to include Carlene, come to a conclusion that this dog is ready to be start match up with, with an applicant. There's no set time on training. It'll never be exactly one year. It will never be 18 months or whatever. Every dog is a little bit different. Every dog trains a little bit different but they all start very, very young, within weeks, whether they know it or not, or with the, whether the people that are working with them know it or not, just feeding dogs is training dogs, in a manner of speaking. Mm -hmm. um, Every time you handle an animal, you're training right. it, or a kid. Yeah. <laughs> that's why we get a little bit edgy when things go wrong, when people handle dogs wrong, or do things wrong when they're very little puppies, because things tend to stick with puppies for a while. So handling puppies is a uh, very important thing. We have rules. Right. We have rules, and the rules are there because there's reasons for those rules. It takes longer, Carly and I have had this conversation, it takes longer for us to fix a problem than to do it correctly the first time. We train them right to begin with, it takes less time to train them. We have to correct mistakes, especially silly mistakes. It takes us longer to move a dog along. I've often said that Great Danes are born trained. It's just you, as long as you don't wreck them. There's an awful lot of just plain steering them in the right direction. And they get it. Okay, I'll, let's see when we've got three more on here. We can do real quick. Yeah. You got 504, so you. Yeah. All right. What decided to work for dogs? What made you decide to work with dogs? Well, I've been working with dogs for quite a while, so it's kind of like one of those things when you have a profession, you kind of stick with it. So, um, fortunately, 
my military career and my police career both had dogs involved in them, so it kind of flowed the same way. You kind of do what you're comfortable with. And this is a very rewarding job. If you ever, any trainer that you'll ever speak to will tell you that there's nothing more rewarding than to have a dog that you've worked with and put a lot of time in, a lot of effort into, and it works out in the end, and it, especially a service dog that helps people. Um, it's very rewarding, and it only takes one good thank you or to see, in my case, a veteran look at you and give you a hug and say thank you. Um, to realize that the you know last year, year and a half that you spent with a dog uh, really is uh, very effective and rewarding. Plus the dogs are happy. <laughs> yeah. That's the one that gets me. You know, the dogs love it. Okay, so by now we've been doing this how long with trainers? A week? No. Almost a week? Well, we have a power one. outage. Oh, okay, yeah, we have a power outage. <laughs> So Katie, just, Megan, just for and future you. record, I am here Tuesdays and Thursdays. Katie is here Mondays and Saturdays. I don't know. And Megan is here <laughs> the other two days. So I don't know. Uh, next time, I would love to <coughs> see some questions for me that involve the veteran side of it, working with the veterans. Oh. Without yeah. giving out information about the veterans themselves, but I can give you <coughs> some stories, some related. Um, information about how the veterans, how we kind of work with the veterans, and uh, how we kind of link up with the veterans and the dogs with the veterans. Thank you very much, and I will see everybody Tuesday. <laughs>